Hey folks, Dan here. Uh, I hope your week has been well. Mine has been pretty fine. Uh, Jenny has gone back to work, so I have a little bit more free time during the week to get projects done uh, instead of uh, the wedding, although that is probably the most important project that I'll be working on all year. All in all, the library's been the library. Uh, when you deal with the public, you're bound to deal with some folks that are a little um, tougher uh, on your on your psyche, on your uh, not your well being, but just like tiring. Uh, so that's that's been a little bit of something. I have been on a journey recently, inspired by that book from Vlog Two. Uh, Stillness is the key. Uh, I have started journaling. Uh, so if I show you the float cam uh, on stream, if you come to twitch.tv forward slash Dan Finity uh, and you happen to see this book, that is my journal. Uh, and it has been super helpful. When I first started doing it, I was like, oh man, this is dumb. Uh, but the idea is to like get everything out of your brain so that uh, you're actively processing, right? It's not so much a document for future generations because I think that's a little egotistical to even think of yourself uh, as important enough, uh, for that. Although like I can see having, having that for genealogy and, and so forth, but really for me, it's just about processing my thoughts and getting them out. And the first couple of days I was really nervous about journaling. Um, I don't know why I'm more nervous about writing something down on a page than talking directly into uh, a camera, uh, documenting my life and my opinions and my ideas, but it is a little bit more, um, soul bearing um ideally i'm the only one that will ever know what's in this notebook uh and that's something that is kind of freeing in a in a way and i have been like feeling better because of this i've been trying to get up extra early the crack of noon <laughs> i've been i've been trying to get up early and i've been trying to to write these things down uh before i do anything else uh that includes the scroll that doesn't always happen, and I find that the days that I end up writing after I've done some scrolling, um, I don't feel as, like, empty. So that's, that's something that I'm actively trying to work on, uh, is to make sure that the phone kind of stays vaulted away for as long as possible before I even uh, write anything down. Moving from there, I want to say thank you to everybody who checked out the Elgato XLR doc video. That is always something tricky for me. Um, I'm incredibly blessed, I guess, to say I don't know by whom, but I'm incredibly blessed uh, to be uh, considered for a, a lot of partnerships and for a lot of ambassador programs, and one of which is Elgato. Uh, it, that had been one that I'd been chasing for years. I don't think I necessarily did it in the right ways in the first couple of years. I mean, how can you, uh, when you're out of practice and you don't want to feel like a shill really for anything. Um, but part of being a creator and an influencer on the internet that plays video games and makes, makes, uh, videos and stuff like that's part, that's part of it. But like with the Elgato stuff, I've been using their products for years and years and years. Um, build quality on, on everything that I've received from them is pretty solid software wise. Yeah. They can be a little bit of a pain, but I haven't really had too many issues aside of things here and there. And I've been doing this for nearly eight years in September. It will be eight years of streaming on Twitch, um, which is bonkers. To me. Working with Elgato and being able to get devices in to review, it's always kind of nerve wracking because you do have to kind of ask yourself the question of like, am I being beholden to a thing because I got it for free? That's something that I've had to think about when I received game codes for free. Like, I always try to be conspicuous about my relationships with these companies, with these, uh, with these entities that I respect, but trying to maintain objectivity as well to 
allow my own expression for something. And if something sucks, I really, I want to say that something sucks. Uh, and I find that most, uh, of the companies that I work with are understanding of that. And I try to, I try to give information to them. Uh, if something's wrong, like with the Elgato, I mentioned it in the review and the unboxing is that the latest patch for the, um, wavelength software it didn't really agree with my computer and i i'm still rolled back to the previous one from april uh on this thing am i still using the xlr dock with my microphone absolutely it is it sounds great i don't have any issues with how it sounds i think it helps my stream deck with the functionality i'm realizing now that something that i should have put in my uh review is that it doesn't have the haptic feedback touch on top, which is something that I do miss when Jenny comes into the room and like has some information for me. I can't just really touch the top of that thing and be like, okay, go ahead. I have to, there's a few more touches I have to do in order to shut off my mic, which is maybe a feature that I need to build into my stream deck plus post this uh, to prepare. But, um, it's a, it's, it also is like, you never know who's going to watch your videos, you never know who's going to be a fan of you. You never know who's going to be critical of you uh, anytime that you put yourself out there. And I'm just really, really grateful for the folks who come through and are understanding maybe of the dynamic of some of these things and understand that I'm trying to be as truthful and honest as possible for those people who give me the grace to do, to do so. Um, thanks. That means a lot. Uh, that being said, I will have a, like standards and practices that I am going to be putting up here in the next few days. Uh, I'm trying to work out where I will put those. Uh, but I want, I want to make sure that people know what I'm promising, not only on like the business side, but also um, for audience side, uh, what to expect from me when they see a review or when they see me play a game that conspicuously says sponsored by X gaming company. You guys deserve that. And it's something that I think will help me in the long run. Moving on a little bit into gaming and also kind of a nice little bookend to that conspicuous uh, review side uh, is we're going to talk about the games that I've been playing lately. I, I've been trying to do more variety on the channel, not only because it seems like Destiny is having a hard time uh, and we'll get to that a little bit later, but also because I personally need it creatively. To, to flourish, I feel like. Um, Destiny has been my home. I'm never quitting it. Or, well, let's not say never, but I'm not quitting it currently. Uh, nor will you see me make a tweet of like, guys, I'm leaving. Because uh, I feel like that kind of grandstanding is kind of whatever. Uh, and you see that happen over and over again with different creators. And then they, they end up coming back like a month before some DLC or whatever. So I really don't see myself making that kind of post. Um, about this kind of thing. But Thursdays, I've been trying to do this thing uh, that I originally was going to call Dan versus, but then realized that there was an adult swim show called that. So instead, we're calling it versus variety. Versus variety is me trying to work out what games I want to play uh, and, and hopefully do it in an entertaining manner for all of you, uh, I'll be taking the uh, streams of Versus Variety and breaking them up into different live plays and throwing them up on the YouTube channel as well. I, the first of which will be Angerfoot, which I had the pleasure of receiving from uh, Devolver Digital. From They're the publisher of the game. Angerfoot is a really fun game. Uh, Think of it, you're going John Wick, but instead of a puppy, it is about sneakers that were stole. Uh, and you work your way through about 64 different levels uh, in order to topple the syndicate that has stolen your shoes from you. I found that most of the game was really enjoyable. There's a whole lot of different shoes that you can unlock and that all have different abilities, that all have some sort of benefit in a in a boss fight or... Uh, there's one that every time you kick a door down, uh, cause instead of punching, you're kicking baby. Uh, every time you kick a door down, it, it explodes the door or every time you kick an enemy, it 
cause them to turn into a, a, a detonation. There's a shoe that makes you mini. There's a shoe that expands the heads of all of your enemies and on and on and on. And the variety of the enemies, the variety of the biomes, I'm going to call them, they're not really worlds, of Shit City that you're running through is is pretty fun. The boss battles are most are mostly unique. I can only think of one that I absolutely despise and uh it really really peeved me off uh was Pizza Pig and that is the last I'd say biome boss of oh. Shit City before you get into the final four missions leading to the end. And that was mainly because while you're going through the boss fight, there's like three stages to it. And it is incredibly frustrating to get through two phases. One, you have to push him into cheese sauce in order to drown a little bit, and that's how you do damage. The other one is that you have to shoot uh, little pig nipples. They have faces, so I don't know if they're nipples or maybe they're babies that are coming. I don't know. But you have to shoot six of those off of the body, and that's all well and good. Uh, I think the frustrating bit is when the entire arena fills up with cheese and you have a boat that handles was so frustrating and floaty. Um, I thought that I could kind of pardon the pun here, cheese it uh, by putting on the Holy shoes, which are basically Birkenstocks. Um, The reason why they're called Holy shoes is because they give you a revive. Uh, I thought, okay, I have an extra life and I can walk on water. So maybe I can like do some damage there or get back into the boat, whatever whatever I need to do. Um, that was not the case. It ended up breaking the game to the point where I got frustrated and, and called it a night there. Um, but then I said something called the fireman shoes. I think they're called the fireman shoes and they uh, allowed me to withstand all flame and explosive damage, uh, which definitely made that fight a lot easier. Something that I liked at first about the game that uh, started to wear on me and in conversations with people, I that were watching those streams. Um, I can understand how it can become grating. The, the soundtrack, the soundtrack is bumping. It is four on the floor. Just, it wants you to know that it's there, that it's present and it's constantly pushing you along. And in some instances where you kind of get into a flow state with it, it's really cool to see the action and the music pair up and you're, and you're just annihilating everything. And others, it is partially anxiety-inducing and samey enough that it uh, it starts starts wearing on you. Toward the end of the game, I'd say probably like the last ten, probably that last biome into the last four missions, uh, I was kind of over the soundtrack a little, just because the variety wasn't wasn't as there as um, you'd hear in any other game. There was a nice little touch of instead of the doosh, 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 uh, you walked into a bathroom and it just kind of became this serene little da, 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 da. it was kind of nice uh, and it, it made me chuckle just the stark difference between those two. Uh, if you enjoy first person shooters, if you enjoy like run based things because it does have a timer that is going constantly, I'd say it's worth a pickup. If you're in the market for a game like that, it, I don't think it took me very long. I think a total, it made me maybe took like eight hours total. Well worth it. Uh, once again, I got the game from Devolver Digital. So take that with a grain of salt if you want to. During the weeks that uh, I was playing Angerfoot, I also played Nobody Wants to Die, which is a game that is from Play On. They are owned by the Embracer Group the like nefarious organization that purchased up a whole bunch of studios and then either closed them down or laid off a bunch of people uh, over the past couple of years. Nobody wants to die is a futuristic cyberpunky noir game. A lot of the reviews that I saw referred back to it as like a Bioshock. And I think that's just because there's like art nouveau uh, decorations throughout the entire thing. I've also been playing prey and that also has uh, some, some of those kind of same aesthetics, but nobody wants to die. The whole gist is that you're trying to, to find the murderer of the man who solved immortality for humankind. While you're doing that, you are using tools to rewind time to investigate. I had a lot of people in my chat reference it back to like Arkham, 
the Arkham games when you're doing detective mode as Batman. And yeah, it is pretty much that uh, when you're in those spaces. Occasionally you have some decisions to make. Occasionally there's some decision trees uh, and, so, and some dialogue along the way that has an impact on the game, I believe. I've only done one playthrough of it. Um, and it was about six hours for my entire run through. But for the first, I would say three investigations, it was kind of interesting. The me mechanics were cool. Um, the characters are neat. The characters are really well developed throughout the entire thing. I think the mechanics did wear a little long in the tooth for the investigations. And in some of those, I would say probably the third and the fourth more specifically. Uh, and then the ending just kind of ramped up and then left you. Uh, it was, it was kind of wild. <laughs> like how, how drastic it felt toward the end as compared to earlier. I guess you can kind of attribute that to the noir nature of the story where, you know, you're just kind of slowly getting facts together. And then er all of a sudden everything starts pulling together into one tight little bundle and you go from there. But there were a couple stretches of the game where I was like, okay, if I can, if I can do a little less talky here, that would be fantastic. If you're into detective games, like more text-based detective games, absolutely. If you're expecting like a Bioshock Infinite or a Prey kind of immersive sim, uh, I would say pass on it. The last game I'm going to talk about is Thank Goodness You're Here. Uh, it is about three hours tops uh, to beat this game. Uh, it is well worth the price of admission. I think it's the funniest game that I've, that I've played. Just the jokes were insanely funny. It has like a cartoon network, adult swimmy vibe when it comes to the humor as well as the animations for, for many of the townsfolk. You're this weird little guy. You've been thrust into this city in order to speak to the mayor. Uh, but before you can speak to the mayor, you end up doing a whole bunch of uh, little side quests for the townsfolk there. Uh, Matt Barry is one of the voices. It is incredibly charming. It is also super raunchy. <laughs> it, 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 I feel like it, it earns its mature rating. If you're able to go in without watching any stream for it and just immerse yourself in the world, let each of the little story pop-ups just happen. It's a, it is a ride and I think it's a magic trick best, best experienced rather than seen. Uh, the final thing that I'm going to talk about here is uh, the Bungie layoffs and Destiny Digest. And I don't want to like delve too deeply into my my personal feelings about Destiny because I, I think I've been talking about how lonely I felt over the past few weeks on the previous vlog episodes of Double Down. And I don't think that that's that some of that has been relieved. And I'd say thank you to friends like uh, Mod Sherpa and Dunes and Bonafide Hero. Um, for helping to alleviate some of that loneliness. I'll also say that I've probably been burnt out on Destiny since Into the Light. The Into the Light, Into Pantheon, Into the Final Shape pipeline that happened, I, it just, it was a lot. With those three things kind of coming into conjunction, I also was pushing myself to become better, and I was pushing the Helper Squad to become better. And I think uh, maybe that stressed myself out, a lot. I think it also stressed out some of the people on the helper squad uh, and some friends who, who ended up uh, leaving the helper squad because uh, I was kind of pushing people. Um, that's all in hindsight. It's, you know, hindsight's 2020. And that's something that I'm, I'm working through this month is trying to figure out how to uh, be a better leader in that regard. But um, I wouldn't lay that entirely at Destiny's feet either. That's that's kind of like a personal ego-driven thing that I need to work on. But what I can lay uh, at Bungie's feet are the layoffs. Uh, layoffs are terrible. I believe I talked about this in a video last year. But um, I absolutely despise layoffs. I don't think anybody. I I don't think anybody in their right mind likes seeing people lose their livelihood. Um, there were a few ghoulish people that I saw celebrating specific people being kicked off of the team. And that it really pisses me off. Actually, you can see somebody having possibly one of the lowest days of their life. And then you're like, yeah, I'm going to kick them. 
that it just, it's so dumb to me. I'll never understand it. And if you're one of those people and you're hearing this and you're offended, then it's fine to turn this off and move on. But yeah, it's just the ghoulishness of seeing, seeing people lose their jobs and take joy in it. Um, I, I think that a lot of the community reacted in a kind way to the people that were laid off. I was trying to share as many of the people who had been laid off as possible. I was also trying to share job opportunities that I see. I'm still doing that. If, if uh, I see anything kind of pop up on my timeline, I'm retweeting it because uh, I know that several of the people who were laid off, not only in this last round of layoffs, but also last year, they still follow me and they are people. And I want to take care of people who give me any, any amount of time. It might be one of my biggest flaws is that I try to uh, maybe overextend a little bit too much, but I, I feel like for those people, it's, it's worth it. I, I think now that the, the heat is a little died down, there is a really good conversation that actually just released today on friends per second. Uh, there's a conversation with Jason Schreier about kind of everything that led to the layoffs, everything that led to the weird decisions from leadership, not only that, but the conversation about consolidation and how that has affected the industry and uh, a company that you, that I, put a lot of faith in and expected a lot of, I don't think I put as many expectations on them now. I think there are a lot of devs that are still there. I I can't imagine having something like that happen and having like not at least some form of survivor's guilt or some sort of uncertainty as to whether you're next. If another round of these happen, it's got to be really tough there. And I, my heart goes out to the folks at Bungie. My heart goes out to those who are laid off. It's just an impossibly tough situation and the human toll of the thing sucks. That's the thing that we should be focused on is the human toll on this. Uh, Destiny, the game seems like it's always, it it will be here um, for all of us millennials that discovered it when we were oh so young, but it's going to continue to be around. It's going to continue to be worked on by very talented people who care about the thing. Um, it just sucks that, uh, it's part of this system that constant, constantly needs to consume money and people and money and people. I think outside of the pandemic, uh, what history is not going to look kindly on is how we let corporations become more greedy (laughs) in their time and just let them consume and consolidate until art that we've loved disappears. I'll still be doing helps in destiny. I have made a disclaimer in, I have made a disclaimer in my channel, uh, so that anytime we come back from an ad break, it says, Hey, layoffs happened here at Bungie. Um, here's what you can do to help those who have been affected. And here's some information. Uh, there's a Nicole Carpenter, article at Kotaku talking about uh, the rise of the video game union, um, which you can print into a little booklet and share amongst people. uh, If you're in rooms of power uh, that can, that can make those kind of decisions. Uh, It is, it is a good article. It explains unionization, what it could look like in the industry, what it looks like in other industries that are adjacent. Um, It's just really well done. It came out a couple of years ago. And uh, I think now more than ever, we need to see the games industry unionize and uh, really fight for the worker uh, instead of just constantly churning. That's what I'd like to see um, personally. But like I said, I will continue to be playing Destiny 2 on the channel. Uh, Sundays are always helps. I'll always be around to help folks with PVE stuff. Um, Whether it shows up on other days is kind of up to my mood. Uh, It definitely will not show up on Thursdays anymore um, because of the versus variety. I really, I, I love doing that thing. Um, Tuesdays is still reset. Uh, I may end up changing my schedule around on Tuesdays. So keep an eye out for that, but I will continue playing destiny. It's, it's, it's home. It's, 
It's where I met most of the folks who are watching this. I'd miss you guys and by proxy it if I didn't continue uh, playing it, which seems odd to say. Uh, as far as Destiny Digest goes, I am still making decisions about it. I had a lot of momentum to get uh, the panel show going uh, before the layoffs, and now after talking with everybody, it seems we're all kind of like in this limbo state of like, well, we don't know what's going to happen with the game and we don't know the future of it. It seems like Bungie is going to be talking about that at some point in the near future. Um, but with everything so up in the air, who knows? I know next week is GCX uh, and some of uh, my compatriots will be down there and I'm sure that they will speak to uh, whoever is down there uh, representing Bungie. But uh, yeah. I think we're going to press the, the pause button on that until we get a little bit more information uh, going forward. You'll probably see more double downs than you will see Destiny Digests over the next, I'm going to say, month or so, uh, especially with my wedding being in September. Uh, we have a lot of things going on in September. We have, I have my stream anniversary. We have my wedding. We have my birthday. Uh, yeah. There's there's just a lot going on going into the next month. So uh, you'll probably see more of these than uh, than Destiny Digest at the moment. And I think that's that's where I'm at. I'm trying to think of there's anything that I'm missing. I don't think that there is. I know that there will be a couple of streams uh, for Gamescom that I will be doing. Uh, I've been asked to be a part of the Future Game Showcase for PC gamer again this year. That's going to be huge. That with it comes with a, a boost uh, in the Twitch directory. So the, you'll be seeing me on the 21st at least. Uh, and then I'm going to try to cover the uh, the nights of coverage from Gamescom uh, hosted by Jeff Keeley. I think that happens at like 2 a.m. my time uh, EST because they happen at 8. C E S D. I don't know, man. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see uh, just how all that works out. Oh, one last thing before we go. I think I'm also going to give my rec recommendations for the week. Last week it was a book. This week it's ketchup. Uh, Zeisner curry ketchup. Uh, it is a German thing. Jenny's mother got this for us, uh, and it is a game changer. If you're able to get your hands on this curry ketchup. You can put it on hot dogs. You can put it on bratwurst. Makes it taste delicious. You can use it for fries. Uh, it takes me back to the streets of Bayreuth when I was eating my first Bayreuther uh, sausage out, out, just out in the street. Like anybody visiting Germany. Yeah, it's great. If, you, if you're able to find it, Zeisner curry ketchup, it'll change your life. That said, thank you for listening. You can find me on the Twitter and the Instagram and the threads and the TikTok, I guess at danfinitygg you can also find me on twitch three days a week not only with destiny 2 helps but also with versus variety on thursdays join the discord discord.gg forward slash danfinity where we talk about games where we are the, talk about each other's lives i believe our, a friend of ours had a birthday today uh, in the server so happy birthday boogity join there wonderful community and i think that's it thank you so much for listening and i hope you find what you're grinding for.